In this video, we're gonna be unboxing the new K1C 3D printer from Creality. A great tool to have on hand is a 3D printer. Uh, one of the biggest issues with 3D printers that I've had in the past is that they're a little bit rough around the edges. You usually require a little bit of tinkering and finicky uh, setting adjustments and things like that. You can usually get them dialed in if you're willing to spend the time to do it, but you know, a lot of us really don't have the time and a lot of us don't necessarily have the expertise to be able to get in and change parts or tweak programming or things like that that was traditionally required on a lot of printers. And that's been something that's been really big struggle for me because if I recommend something to you guys, I want it to be something that you take it, you buy it, you open it up, you set it up and it just works. And so far I haven't come across a 3D printer that is that. I've got a Flash Forge uh, Creator Pro 2 right now, which works pretty well, but it's definitely got some issues. And that's why I really haven't covered it a whole lot on the channel uh, because it does require some finicky crap. That it just honestly, I don't feel comfortable recommending it. Well, I have heard a lot of really good things about the new K1C and I wanted to check it out. So I reached out to Creality and they gave me a pretty good deal on the new K1C so I could give you guys a review. I did have to buy this one, but at a discounted rate. So uh, this is in no way sponsored by Creality. This will be my legit opinion of this printer, the unboxing. Uh, but once again, much of this is based on information that I've received from other owners of the K1 uh, and the K1 Max. Uh, the K1C being a very new version that's supposed to actually address a few minor issues with the K1s uh, that they actually fixed in the K1C. So I'm very excited to see how this goes uh, because this is, from many of the people that I talk to, it's on the same level as something like a bamboo. Now it may not be exactly like a bamboo if you're familiar with those, uh, they seem to at least currently be considered one of the top dogs for an entry level uh, printer, you know, sub three, sub thousand dollar range. Um, these right now are going for about 600 bucks. It varies a little bit on price and where you get it. Um, but uh, for what you're paying and from what I've been told, it sounds like it's a pretty good printer. So uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up. We're going to see what's in the box. This box is sealed. I have not opened it up. I have no idea what's inside. Uh, I did get a few extras on there. Um, they had a few different tiers that you could choose to buy and I got the the highest tier. It had the most extra stuff in there. Like one of them was a filament dry box. Uh, if you're familiar with 3D printing, it is pretty important that you do not have moisture in your filament. Now I have never really had a huge issue with that here. Uh, you can usually tell from like what the, your prints will start getting like bubbles and pops and things. That's where the moisture in the hot end will actually kind of like develop an air bubble and then it like pops. So um, keeping your filament dry is important. That's why they come in uh, sealed bags with the air sucked out is to try to keep them in the best shape as possible, keep the humidity out. And the dry boxes uh, like this, which there are many brands out there you can get, by no means do you have to get a Creality one. Uh, but the benefit is that it will keep your filament dry or dry out filament that might have gotten some condensation built inside, a little bit of water, moisture, things like that. So uh, it wasn't too much more to add it to this kit. So I just went ahead and did this one, even though I have other ones that I've used before that work pretty well. Um, but that is something to consider if you're not gonna be printing a ton, which you know, for me, I don't have the printer going nonstop. So uh, it makes a little more sense for me to, you know, being that a, a kilogram of this stuff will last quite a while uh, for the filament. Um, so there's that. Uh, now this one here, the C is actually for carbon. So it's supposed to be really good at like the carbon fiber filaments. And with this kit, it did come with two rolls of filament. Now I have the Hyper PLA uh, in white, as well as the Hyper PLA carbon fiber in black. Um, so this one is technically a carbon fiber filament. Uh, from Creality. So I'd be interested to try that out. I don't know a whole lot about it. I've used, mostly used ABS and 
TPU. Now, TPU is a little bit more of a flexible material, so it's really cool if you want to check that stuff out. Uh, ABS is obviously really good with heat resistance for things like what a lot of us are doing. If you know, you keep up with this channel, watch stuff, you're probably uh, working on cars or something like that because that's a lot of what I do here. Uh, so PLA and PETG are not particularly great in high heat conditions like outside or in a car or something like that, where ABS is actually really good. And these printers shine with ABS. They do really good with ABS. But I am interested to see how the PLA uh, carbon fiber filaments do as well. So I'll be doing some tests with that and just kind of comparing. Uh, but for the most part, it's going to be ABS for me. Uh, with an occasional TPU. TPU is really good for like keychains or something because it has a high flexibility, which is really nice. And lastly, it did include also a magnetic print bed. And these are really cool because you can attach it to the printer and then the top part comes right off. It allows you to easily remove your print from the surface. Uh, where traditionally on a bed, if it's solid and it's built down, you got to kind of scrape it off, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. These work a lot better. Uh, I have started using these on uh, my other printer as well as my resin printers, uh, and it does make removal a lot easier. So that's not a bad idea as an upgrade. If you do want to get a really any 3D printer, a, uh, a flexible magnetic build plate is a good option. So now let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we got inside. It does have some instructions here on the top as far as unboxing and things. So that is a nice touch. Uh, makes it easy to access and uh, you know should answer any questions that you might have. So we got a top cover, some more instructions, a little sticker pack there in the back. And as expected, it is packaged really well with some pretty solid foam uh, that should absorb most any shocks that it probably had in shipping. It's got foam inside holding all of the motors in place. So theoretically, this should be off to a good start. Something I did see mentioned was uh, the glass doors being shattered occasionally. That is not the case on the unit that I received. So that is a big plus. Everything's set up, everything's opened up, and I did end up having to switch the main power switch from 230 volt to 120, so you do want to check that. Um, but we're plugged in, we're ready to turn it on. Uh, I do have a roll of filament opened up and ready to install as well. Uh, install, you know, as far as setup goes, it was pretty simple. Uh, you just remove a whole lot of foam and protective coverings. This is a static. <laughs> Uh, it's very clingy, so there's a lot of dust trying to cling to it right now, but uh, we're ready to start it up. We'll flip the switch in the back here. It's always a good sign when no sparks are flying. You know you did something right. So we'll go ahead and select our language here. We are English. We're going to remove three screws, A, B, and C. They're all on the inside here. We do have arrows pointing to the direction, so I'm going to remove this little cap here. And there was a toolkit included, uh, as is pretty typical with most 3D printers, they include enough tools for you to do basic maintenance on them, primarily because historically speaking, you have to do a lot of maintenance on 3D printers, which once again is one of the reasons why I've never really been fond of, of pushing any one printer or not. It's just the complexity of trying to get them to run right has always been something a little intimidating for some. Um, obviously I've had 3D printers for a while, I use them, I tinker with them, I try to fix them, you know, so it can be done and many people do it without any issues, but, uh, you know, trying to recommend something to you guys, like, uh, I'll use my laser cutter as an example, I would highly recommend that laser cutter. My water jet, 
I do not recommend the water jet. Laser cutters, you're gonna be spending a ton of money to get a laser that can cut through steel or aluminum. Uh, the water jet is just very high maintenance and it's prone to just a lot of issues, especially if you're not using it on a regular basis. If I was to use my water jet every single day, uh, I think the workload versus maintenance wouldn't be so bad. But if you don't use it every day, there's a lot of issues that kind of creep up from the water sitting and things like that. So uh, it's definitely something to consider as far as that. But my hope is with the 3D printer, this is one that I can recommend to you guys. And you know, for the price point that it's at, uh, I think it's a pretty good deal, assuming that it is as good as I have been told. And that's what we're gonna find out. Now these three screws are just holding the build plate down uh, during shipping. So we're removing those three screws. Once again, do make sure that you remove all three of the screws that are inside here with the uh, little yellow arrow pointing directly at each one of the three. All right, so it has finished the self-calibration process. It took something like 11, 12 minutes. Um, and it did level the bed, it checked a whole bunch of stuff. So theoretically, we're ready to print. So it finished the update. It's gonna go through another calibration process. Um, once again, it is involved as this is time-wise. It's still less than a lot of things that I've seen where you gotta put papers in and things. And it's a pain in the butt, so. Uh, if you're new to 3D printing, this actually isn't that bad. So take a couple minutes to set up and calibrate. I'm just hoping it does it on its own. Uh, it does have a LiDAR system, I believe. Uh, if I was reading that right, I, I was researching the K1, K1 Max, and the K1C, so I may be getting some of these mixed up. But yeah, the, the LiDAR system, which I do believe is on this, uh, is supposed to be pretty cool at leveling. So uh, we'll see how accurate it is. So I've been using a printer, playing around with it for several weeks now. It's been uh, maybe like two weeks and just printing a bunch of different stuff, trying to see how it did overall, just performance with different materials uh, and different styles of prints. I've done a few printing in the past, um, different files that I've struggled to print in the past. And I went ahead and tried it on this one to see how it went and it went a lot better. I went back to a lot of that stuff. Uh, to start with, I did print some of the stuff, the files that are included on the printer itself. Uh, I don't know where the Benchy went, but I printed that. It's a very fast Benchy print, and it was very clean. I wish I had it here, I don't. The files included on the thumb drives almost always print well, so that's to be expected. It's the same thing with the Benchy. It did print very fast, which was pretty impressive. Next, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and print the little blocks for my kid's game room. Uh, if you've seen that video, I have the LED strips along the top of the ceiling, but the way that the channels for the LED strips are, there's not really a joining point in the middle, and I wanted to create something, so I did end up printing these, and they are uh, just that same PLA. I designed it myself in Tinkercad and it printed flawlessly. I didn't have a single problem with it. Next, I wanted to go to a print that I had purchased from Colts 3D, I think it was, years ago. I thought it'd be really cool. And so I bought the Crystal Dragon and I didn't realize it was actually two files in there. It was a standard Crystal Dragon. It's like maybe that long or something you printed on there. It wasn't, I was able to print that pretty well using resin printers, using uh, FDM printers, uh, they were okay. The details on FDM was not great. The resin printers looked really good, but there was another file in there, which is a stacked version. And basically it's, it just coils up several tiers to create a long dragon. So I ended up printing it on this one just to see how it went. And stock settings, that same PLA material, the white stuff that came with the printer, 
it printed flawlessly the first time. Now this did take three days to print through, but the detail is borderline resin level. If you look really close, you can see the layering, but you gotta look really close. Uh, and I printed this on point two. So it could have been even better if I printed point one, it probably would have taken five days to print. This took about three days on point two with stock settings and it is eight feet long. And impressively enough, it was all loose when I pulled it off the printer. So like there's a scaffolding system to the print itself. I did have to break it off of that, which was not hard. Once again, I'm fully aware if you can take a, a, the cheapest of cheap printers, put time and money into it and dial it in to be able to do stuff like this. But I want to, to find a printer that those of us that just want to buy it and it work, it does. And Creality did that. They did a good job, especially for, for what it is price point wise. Um, I would expect the same from a bamboo, but the Creality did it and price wise, it's very competitive. But this was always one that I wanted to try to print. I've printed it on resin printers, did not work. Even my Elegoo Saturn could not do this. I had issues. Uh, I tried on my Flash Forge, no go. Did not, did not work out at all. Worked very well on this, and that's with stock settings. So then I wanted to move on to another material that I really do like to work with, and that is TPU. Uh, TPU is pretty cool for those of you that are not familiar. TPU is a flexible material. So it's almost like a silicone rubbery type flex to it. These are really good for keychains. So that was the first thing I printed was a old design keychain. And I've done this on the Flash Forge. Uh, and I believe I even have some samples here. I'll try to pull them out and do a close up side by side of the Flash Forge print versus the Creality print. Uh, one thing about the Flash Forge, it was a dual head, so I could print two different colors, and that was really cool. Uh, so I would do like a black background with a red face to it, and it printed well. I didn't have any issues with the TPU, but I wanted to see how did this perform with the TPU, and it did well, it did fine. I don't think there was any issues with it. Uh, the detail does look good. At this point, I'm still using point two. I did not up, step up to a point one yet on the print uh, height, layer height. I also printed a wheel. This to a tire to give you an idea of just the flexibility of TPU. Um, I've even seen people print like flip flops. Now, I long term, this is not going to be the same as like a manufactured product. Uh, but for like prototyping and making things and key rings, key keychains, keychains are perfect. So if you are a retrofitter and you want to create your own keychains to give to some customers or something like that. TPU is a really good filament for that. You can get a key ring, you can design your, your logo and print them out using TPU for relatively cheap. And it is an excellent material for a keychain. So um, that was what I was doing with them for a little while and it definitely is pretty cool. So beyond that, another fun, tricky print is the sword, retractable swords. Um, this is one that I grabbed online on Thingiverse and I figured I would go ahead and print it out and see. The big test always with these is when you first finish the print, it'll be like this. And the question is, does it retract? So you pull it up like that and you fling it out. Does it come out? And it was close. It did not come out on the first try, but after a couple more flings, it did. Now on other printers that I've done these before, most of the time you gotta play with it. You gotta stick something in there and kind of like break it apart. Uh, a, a modified printer, it probably could print it perfectly fine. But you know, out of the box, stock print settings. This one is PLA as well. And it did print well. Crystal Dragon and the sword, uh, they're a little bit more of a, of a technical print. It's a good way to test a printer and see how good it is tuned. And how well it can print so so then stepping up from there uh 
As some of you who have been watching the channel probably are aware, I did recently pick up an R32 Skyline and I thought it'd be really cool to print the motor for the R32. Now the best I could find was a 2.6. I did find a really good file for a 2.6, so I printed that. Uh, my, my car came with the 2.0, it's gonna have the 2.5 Neo, but uh, pretty similar design, so I went with the 2.6. Now, this is about a 40 part print. There's a bunch of different pieces. This did take several days to print, and it is entirely out of PLA carbon. That is a filament that I got with the Creality printer. It was a black carbon. All of the colored parts are painted. Uh, and there is a fair amount of glue holding the pieces together. But all in all, the detail is really good. This print uh, actually said recommended for resin printers. And one of the reasons being the detail level that you get with a resin versus an FDM. Honestly, it's not bad. I think the overall print was really good quality. Um, if you look really close, you can see that there is some layering in there once again but not bad, not something that I'm upset with at all. It will be a display piece down here. I'll just have it set off to the side, um, but I think it turned out great. So that was a, that was a pretty good technical piece to try. Uh, there was a lot of trial and error with settings on this, and it's mainly because of the differences in parts. So for the most part, it was trying uh, supports and bed adhesion styles like so for your supports you have different styles of supports that you can run i just did with the standard hex the standard cross support style and it did fine uh, it did pretty well i did print this at 0.1 layer height to get a little bit more detail out of it uh, and it did once again take a few days to print all of the pieces pieces ranging from an eight hour print on some to 15 minute prints on other parts so uh, a lot of parts in it, a lot of things, and ultimately pretty good turnout on what we ended up getting. Next, I wanted to do some more pieces for my kid's game room. I figured it was a good opportunity to test the printer a little bit more on different things while also creating stuff that my kids might enjoy. And the first thing I went to, I found a Minecraft file online it's just a little 3d sign and they print the little lettering out then there's pins and then a base plate and that did pretty well and i will say like uh on they do recommend that things like pla you take the top off uh, i find that down here in the in the shop i'm in a basement and so it does stay cool i get better prints in general if i just leave the top on all the time so you can see on this one here i did get a little bit of lifting on the side where it didn't stick to the bed as well. And I'm pretty sure that was a draft that let the plastic separate from the bed as it was printing. Um, so ideally, if I really wanted to, and, and maybe I will uh, go back and reprint that and just keep the top on. I kept the top on for all the other prints after that and it was fine. Uh, strangely enough, I had the top off for the Crystal Dragon and it printed fine, but it was a different time you know maybe it was a little bit cooler down here versus when i printed this so uh, just something to keep in mind for the last print i wanted to do something with leds something that would light up and this is a minecraft war block and uh, i found this one online it looked really cool i thought i'd go ahead and print it it printed pretty well. It didn't have any issues. I did use our UCS 2903 in here. Uh, not much else that I saw lit up enough. I wanted it to be bright. Uh, so I went with the 2903s. I put a half meter worth in here in a grid format so that it would have a pretty good output. And then I connected it to an SP110 and I got a little switch on it and turns right on. It is Bluetooth controlled, but in my kid's case, they'll probably just use an on off switch. Uh, possibly we'll change out the controller to one that is Alexa activated, but I just grabbed something that I had on hand and I think it'll work really well, look really good in the room. Um, just a basic color shifting mode right now, uh, but it is pretty bright. I've actually got this turned down to about 20% right now, uh, mainly because the PLA and heat, I don't know the amount of heat that UCS can produce, especially the 2903. I just figured it's easier just to turn it down. The brightness wasn't drastically different between a 100% and like 20%. So 
I just put it at 20%. The heat level was greatly reduced. The power draw was greatly reduced. So I feel like it's gonna be safe for long term on this, but the 2903 actually has more room for power if you wanna go that way. The CA glue was really good to get everything in place and hold it together. The Gorilla Glue Contact Adhesive, once again, just liberally placed it in all the corners to keep everything together and create a good, strong, permanent bond. But then after I got everything together, I started realizing that there was small cracks that you couldn't really see between the pieces. And the easiest way to cover those up was gasket maker. So that's the way I ended up going in the end. And I think the results are great. The kids like it. But there you go. So I've printed quite a few different little pieces and ranging quite a bit in what they were doing. And so far, with minimal tweaking, it has been able to print everything that I've needed it to print. Um, obviously, this is still an FDM printer. If you're talking really small pieces with extreme detail, you're still gonna be stuck with resin. It's just kind of the way it goes. And even at that scale, you're probably gonna wanna get a 6K or maybe even an 8K resin printer uh, to get that level of detail. Whereas a 4K, even a 2K can do most detail levels. This does pretty good. I know I hear people talk about like ABS fumes and stuff. I haven't really noticed it myself, but it could just be because I'm down here and everything vents well. Um, but that's something to consider. They say the ABS fumes are a concern. So that's about as much as you gotta worry about with these things is, is exhaust. Other than that, as far as printing and things, there's not a lot of prep work. I used zero glue sticks on any of these prints. And it will say a lot of people do recommend to use glue sticks to help with adhesion to the bed. One thing long-term with glue sticks is that they create buildup on your build plate and eventually that starts to create issues with prints and stuff. So I, I don't like doing it. I've done it in the past on other printers. I've had to on other printers and that's why. Um, but I found that the build plates included with this worked really well. Uh, the B plate is a must have if you're getting this printer. Uh, the A plate works well for PLAs, uh, but if you're going up to like ABS, the B plate is really good. For the first time, I'm going to actually recommend a 3D printer if you're trying to add that option to your lineup. If you're retrofitting, if you're project building, if you're, if you're like me and you see this as more of a tool than a toy, something that you can use to create things for your projects, but you just need it to work. This is a good buy. This is a good one. It will do for the most part with minimal tweaking, minimal work involved on your part, it will print what you need it to print. There are also files on there that you can get that will help you to calibrate heat settings if you choose to not use Creality materials. Some materials may be a little bit more finicky than others and there are print calibration tools within the software that do work well to help you calibrate it in. Another thing I've seen a lot of people mention on forums and groups on Facebook is not using the Creality software. Now, I used the Creality software on all these prints. My goal was out of the box, how does it work? Don't touch a thing, don't change a thing, no new motors, no changing anything. I bought the Creality add-ons like the build plate, nothing else. And it worked well, it worked great. I don't, uh, I don't really have any issues with that. And by all means, if you're a tinkerer or this is more of a toy for you and you wanna go ahead and buy it, build it out and turn it into some printing monster, go for it, absolutely. But for me, and I think a lot of the people that, uh, that watch this channel, um, it needs to be more of a tool and it needs to be reliable, dependable. It needs to be something you just go to, it prints, it's good. Definitely check it out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for this exact printer, the K1C by Creality. Um, and I'm sure Creality will be putting out even better stuff in the future. Uh, I've never been a big fan of the Ender series, the, C1, the CR10s, any of that stuff. I've had enough of them and known enough people with enough of them to know that they're not solid out of the box. Most of the time they need some tweaking um, and that was one thing that always kind of upset me about Creality, but they've turned it around. The K1 series are solid, the K1C even more so, so I definitely highly recommend it. Thanks for watching the video, guys.
Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And check out nextlevelneo.com for all your LED lighting needs.